Looking to improve on their playoff position, the IPFW men's volleyball team traveled to Lindenwood and Quincy Universities this past weekend. Unfortunately for the Mastodons, they were unable to secure two wins. On Friday night, the Mastodons defeated Lindenwood three sets to zero, but then on Saturday night fell in heartbreaking fashion to the Quincy Hawks in five sets. I'll be joined this week by assistant men's volleyball coach J.W. Kikafer. During the spotlight segment, I'll be joined by freshman outside hitter Austin Neese. I'm your host, Jordan Armstrong. Stay tuned for more on Volley Dance Weekly, right here on CTV. Welcome back to Volley Dance Weekly. I'm your host, Jordan Armstrong. A quick shout out to our sponsors, Alco, Active Ankle, Asics, Glenbrook Dodge, and Hyatt Place. After two road matches, the IPFW men's volleyball team split the weekend against Lindenwood University and Quincy University. Joining me now in place of head men's volleyball coach Ryan rock is assistant men's volleyball coach J.W. Kikafer. Welcome to the show, J.W. It's a pleasure <laughs> to see you again in your third different role. First, you were our yeah. guest during the first week. Yeah. You, in, you were in for me yeah. two weeks ago when Host, I had a little bit of an interview. And now you are the star, as Rock would say, the even star. though... The show's just with him instead of the star. You know, Rock likes to give himself more credit than he deserves sometimes. Starring, he calls himself Starring Rock, you know, all that kind of... He, he thinks he's the star. I'm not sure if he's the star or not. I think you're the star. You're the host. The host oh, not, is now always, you're just sucking I up, hoping that I treat you nicer I think, than I treat Rock. I think Coach Franke would agree with me that the host is the star. You know, we got to get Coach Franke on here one more time. We got we got to figure that one out. Maybe the last week we'll have him come in and, 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 and he'll host it or something. Panel discussion. And yeah, he'll panel. Be able to yeah, you could always take somebody take right a behind stopping you. grounds down and yeah. take back the table. But definitely wanted to talk a little bit about the two matches this past weekend against both Lindenwood and Quincy. Heading into this week, um, prior to the matches, the IPFW men's volleyball team was sitting at uh, tied for eighth, um, also kind of more ninth in the conference. <laughs> Um, which was dead last, but because of our victory Friday night against Lindenwood in three sets, which we'll talk about a little bit more the details of that win, we were able to pass them and kind of take sole possession of eighth place, but then we were unable to climb even further um, Saturday night when we faced Quincy University. Yeah, I mean, I thought we played really good volleyball on Friday. Um, you know, Lindenwood hasn't won a whole ton of matches, so... Um, you know, they, they were kind of looking to, to steal one more, and that would have pretty much secured, you know, their place, um, pretty close to securing their place to eighth place. You know, we would have had a couple of chances if we could have gone out and beat Quincy and taken probably at least one of two on the road. This weekend, uh, we would have had some chances to try to climb out of it. Um, like, they kind of had some chances to try to climb out of it, you know. They got to win two right now as it stands, and we got to just win one. Um, and if we don't win one, if they have to win both. Uh, so, you know, they had some chances to climb out of it. Uh, Ball State, you know, beat them on Saturday, which was nice for us to see. Um, but, you know, I thought we played really, really good volleyball on, on Friday. We, we really controlled the net very well. We blocked the ball really, really well for one of the first times all year. Uh, I thought we brought some great service pressure from the baseline, uh, specifically Andy Sellen and Alex Hardhaller did a really good job bringing the service pressure. Um, but I think our ability to block the ball um, on Friday really set us apart and, and gave us some opportunities to win some sets by some big point margins, which we needed because they swept us here at home. So by those big point margins, we were able to keep the tiebreaker in our favor as opposed to their favor. True. I was just going to explain for the folks at home that the way the tiebreaker situation works when you have two teams that have identical records, the first tiebreaker is head-to-head -head matches played, which looks at who won and who lost when you faced off against the team that you're tied with. In our case, facing Lindenwood, we had lost here at home against them three sets to none. So in order to have a tie in that category, we would have needed to beat Lindenwood by a similar score of three sets to love and then additionally score more points than they were able to score against us when we play, yeah. face them here at home, and that point differential was 12. And when you think of a three-set volleyball match... Well, it was 11. We needed match, 12. It was true. 11. We needed 12. True. It was 11. We needed 12. And when you think of a three-set volleyball match, having going plus 12 means that, ideally, no set is closer than 25-21, which yeah. is kind of an easy margin when you think of a volleyball match. You know, we came in, and I think... You know, we didn't necessarily tell our guys. We didn't necessarily tell our guys we needed to win by this many points. Um, I think we all knew because we all we all know the record and the situation, the tiebreaker that we needed to win in three. 
Um, and I'm assuming some of our guys went back and they checked the points and they knew how many they needed to win by. Um, our focus was getting the win. You know, first we wanted to get the win, first and foremost, uh, doing whatever we can to win. Um, but, you know, the, the number was 11, so we needed to go out and we needed to win by 12 points. Um, in the first set, we won 25 to 13. So we had our 12 points right there. 12 in right the first, there after the first in set. In the first set. So then the job just began became to win in three after that. Um, so we secured our point differential right away. Uh, we knew we just had to come out and win the next few sets. And, you know, I thought our guys showed some good mental fortitude knowing that. It's tough, you know, when your back's against the wall, when you got to win a match to get in. Um, you know, we haven't necessarily been in this situation, um, you know, even if not in a long time really ever with these guys having a have-to-win match, a must-win match. Um, and I think that our guys responded in a great fashion. They came out really, really strong in the first set and continued in the second and the third. And, you know, we, we won those three sets, I think, relatively easily with the way we handled the ball and the way we played offense and I think the way we blocked the ball. True, even with some of the lineup changes that Linden would throw in and after the first set into the second and third set. It really didn't rattle IPFW all that much being able to secure both the second and third set by 25 to 21 margins. And with that, we were able to win Friday, heading into Saturday with some good momentum, and then ended up going to Quincy, um, facing them on their home floor during their senior night to a match that it seemed like the Mastodons got off to a pretty good start in the first set, being able to win it. And then somewhere around the middle of the second set, the wheels kind of started to come off the wagon a little bit. Well, I think one of the th the one of the problems with our team this year has been that we come out and we play really, really good first sets. Um, and it's kind of been consistent that way. We come out and we come out of the locker room and, and we play some good volleyball in the first set. Um, unfortunately, those second sets after we play really good volleyball, I, I think we take a little bit of a breath again. I think we take our foot off the gas. Um, we're not necessarily ready to just go and, and put teams away. Um, and that's kind of showed, you know, reared its ugly head, if you will, a couple of times this year. Um, after the, set, the first set against Lindenwood, I went over to our team and I made sure that we knew we had to focus because we had to win this match in three. Uh, we had to go out, we had to win the next set and bring just as much pressure. Um, you know, maybe it's our fault as coaches that we didn't, you know, have that same kind of mentality with the Quincy match. We didn't go over and, and get in our team's face and tell them, hey, we got to win this match in three because we still need a tiebreaker against Quincy if we want to get up to the seventh place spot. Um, so, you know, maybe, maybe we didn't handle that situation great. Um, you know, I don't know. I, th I think as a team and as our players, we just have not, we've kind of taken a step back in second sets. Um, and it's something that we're gonna have to fix moving forward into, you know, into the weekend if we want to, you know, preserve our eighth place spot and make it into the playoffs. And moving forward, I think we have a chance to compete with Lewis Loyola and, you know, Ohio State looking forward into the playoffs so we can keep that eighth spot. Uh, but we have to make sure that we don't give away free sets, that we're ready to play every single set from point one when it resets. Despite going back to the stat sheet from that second match against Quincy and seeing the obvious disparity in our service pressure between service aces to service errors, are there any other positives that you can really look at coming from that Quincy match into the team going forward knowing that it's now the end of the season and we're gearing up for what should be a playoff match? Well, the Quincy match was, was interesting because I don't think we played as good a volleyball as we did on Friday. Um, I think if you go back and take a look at our match on Friday, that's a lot of the places where you can get your confidence from. I thought we served the ball well. We blocked the ball well. Our offense was really, really good. Um, we distributed the ball really well and pretty evenly across the board. Um, I think in the Quincy match, we didn't pass the ball as well. Um, our service pressure, we let down our service pressure a little bit, and that was compiled with a bunch of different errors um, from different players. Um, you know, I think from a confidence standpoint, I think we know we can beat people and we know we can play with people. Um, I think we need to go back and we need to, we under, I think we understand at this point that it's on us. If we can go out and we can limit our errors, if we, you know, I told the guys when we came back, if we can get out of our own way, you know, we have a chance to do something special in the playoffs. Um, but our problem this entire year has been that we've been in our own way. We've made too many errors. Um, and I think that showed again against Quincy. So a confidence factor is that it was on us, I think. We made too many errors and we weren't, especially late in sets, we made too many errors. Um, and we weren't able to, to capitalize because of it. So in a confidence factor, we know we can win. We just have to limit you know, a certain category. For sure. <clears throat> and speaking of confidence, a great segue into our spotlight segment coming up with freshman Austin Neese. Stay tuned for more on Volley Dance Weekly. My research is from applied electromagnetics and from component level design to system level and then integration of these components. We have a you know, basic well-established uh, laboratory. Uh, that we're using both for research and teaching. I think one of the great advantages that we have is the small classroom environment, because small classroom environment help us to engage students with one-to-one, 
uh, and that dialogue helps us to know our students better. Welcome back to Volley Dance Weekly. Joining me for this week's Spotlight segment is Austin Neese, who hails from Naperville, Illinois, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, pretty close to where we're playing uh, this weekend. It is, as we head over to Lewis and Loyola coming up this weekend. Now, I teased a little bit at the end of the first segment with JW about you and confidence. <laughs> and he was a little confused going into break about, well, what type of tease is that? What does it mean for confidence? And I say that in the sense of, so far throughout this season, even though you've been a freshman, um, Rock, our head coach, has kind of thrown you in a lot of random situations and any time before he throws you in, he pulls you in and kind of tells you exactly what type of spark, what type of personality or what type of player he wants to see when you go out on the court. So how do, in my opinion, I see that in, as being a lot of confidence that he has in you and what you're able to bring to the court. So talk a little bit about how you approach those different types of situations, because although you're primarily not a starter, even though you did start a little bit, you've kind of seen a lot of play and matches coming off the bench. I mean, yeah, when Rock calls me over and like tells me to warm up or whatever, he'll be like, hey, I need you to go and I need you to be the energizer. I need you to bring everyone up, like if we're going down a little bit or something like that. And basically, I just think like, that's what I gotta do. And I make sure that I bring the energy. If he needs me to bring energy or whatever he asks me to do, I make sure that that's what I'm doing and I like focus. Like, it may, like I may not be getting a ton of kills out there or like getting aces or stuff like that, but I think the energy that I bring is what kind of like brings the team up when I go in, not specifically my play out there. Right, and being an outside hitter, there's kind of three different situations where you would kind of see yourself being entered into the game. We've used you um, when an outside hitter is struggling in the front row, so your primary, primary job in that case would be try to generate some offense, get us some kills. If another outside is, say, struggling passing defensively when they're in the backcourt, we'd throw you in to try to solidify our passing a little bit. But we've also used you, especially the last time we used you, we used you as a serve sub towards the end of the match when we played against Grand Canyon, where we were actually down match point against Grand Canyon in the third set. And you came up with a pretty big serve that ended up not only tying the match with a service ace at 24-24, but then scored another point to get us the point ahead at 25 before we ended up winning that set and continuing a comeback. So what is it, especially because a lot of people say coming in and being a serve sub is one of the most stressful and nerve-wracking parts of coming off the bench. Yeah. What is it about that role that we've kind of put you in from time to time that you've been relatively successful at because the same thing happened in a way when we were at on the road at George Mason in a match that we won. I mean, yeah, it's it's like a, basically you got to go back and you just got to think that you're going to make the serve because the second you think you're not going to make the serve, your chances of missing it go way up. I know like against Ball State, I got subbed in to be a serving sub and in the back of my head, I was thinking, don't miss the serve, don't miss the serve. And ended up missing two serves in that match because I was thinking that. So I guess basically what I'm saying is you got to go and you got to be like, I'm going to make this serve. I'm going to put him out of system, get an ace or anything, whatever you're trying to do. And you got to have confidence that you can do that. See, key word, folks, confidence. Exactly yep. what I talked about before, which is exactly why I brought it up with this kid right here. <laughs> um, so talking about that and talking about kind of the season as a whole for you, it is your freshman year, your first time um, playing college volleyball. How has that adjustment been for you going from – club where you played at Sports Performance, one of the better known kind of prestigious club programs throughout the country for um, boys juniors volleyball to transitioning now to Division One volleyball? Well, it's ridiculous how much better the competition is. Like in club, you kind of think you're like, you're like super good, all that. You think you're an all-star and then you get to college and it's like, it's kind of like humbling almost. Like I'm not as good as I thought I was going to be and I need to work to get better. Because in club, like, we're not really playing much of the California teams, so it's not as much competition in Illinois and around there. So you're playing kids that aren't that great, and you're like, wow, I'm really good at volleyball, blah, blah, blah. But then you get to college, and you're like, I have so much to work on. And I guess it kind of it pushes you to work harder. In club, there was no one like really pushing you to work harder, but once you get to the Division One le level, there's even if it's not on your own team, there's other people like, you see, like the outside from Ohio State, you see him and you're like, I want to be that good. So you got to work to get that good because you're not just going to be that good as a freshman. What is it about kind of reaching this point of playing collegiate volleyball that you kind of take pride in yourself after 
playing as a junior um, the, during the junior years with USA Volleyball, now getting to this level, it's kind of the upper echelon of volleyball in this country, except for making the national team, because there is no professional league within the United States. So a lot of junior boys that play, their goal is to make Division One Volleyball. So now that you're here, what is it that you really hope to get out of, not only this year as we wind down here in the next couple of weeks, but also your next three, potentially four years, to, barring any venture situations? Um, I guess just helping out the team in whatever way I can. I mean, obviously I'd like to be playing and stuff, but if that's not my role, being on the bench, being part of the bench squad's awesome, like cheering and all that. I mean, I guess you just gotta be the best teammate you can be and help out in whatever way you can. And speaking of helping out, I mean, being a freshman, we've talked about this with a lot of the younger guys as they've come on the show, um, kind of just the experiences throughout the year that you've kind of gotten, not only getting adjusted to college yourself, but also getting adjusted to the team in Division One Volleyball. What has it been about being a part of this team and joining what we refer to as the Volleydon family that's been so great for you? I mean, the word family is spot on. Like, everyone's just so nice to each other. Like, you can go to someone with your problems. Like, They'll keep your secret secret and all that. Like, it's awesome. Especially like coming in as a freshman, I didn't know many of the guys on the team. Maybe just met them like on my recruiting visit and such. But the first day I got here, I went over to the volleyball house and we all just hung out like a like a family, like a brotherhood. It's awesome. And that's definitely something that you'll see if you haven't experienced as so far this year. That just goes further and further, especially yep. when alumni come into town and all of those fun events that end up happening throughout the course of a year. Um, moving a little bit personally now, I uh, want to get to know you a little bit more, get to know your family, so who supports you and all of that stuff? Well, my parents are basically at every home game. It's, it's awesome. I love them so much. And uh, they're so always supportive of me. Even if I have a bad game, they'll come up to me after and be like, hey, you had a bad game, but you got to go out and work harder. Like, there's no reason to hang your head. This should be like motivation to do better in your next matches. and so on. And then I guess my aunt and uncle, they like they want to support me, but they have two little kids, so I don't get to I don't get to see them as much. Which they live in the Chicagoland area and their daughter is my goddaughter. And this weekend it's actually her birthday, so it's awesome that we'll be in town and they'll get to see me play and it's my goddaughter's birthday. Perfect weekend then for yeah. you, definitely, for sure. Now a little bit uh, schooling-wise, we definitely like to touch on what our student athletes are doing, not only on the volleyball court, which was a huge part, but also inside the classroom. So what are you studying? What's your major? What are you hoping to do with your degree once you complete it in a couple of years? All of that type of fun stuff. Um, I'm a mechanical engineering major, and I, I don't know what I'm planning to do once I get out of college, I guess. but. I mean, so far I like engineering, so whatever job I can get in that. And my dad's an electrical engineer, so this over the summer I actually might go to his work and like do some CAD drawings and stuff like that for him, get some experience, which is going to be awesome. Yeah, I mean, school's school, you have to do it, <laughs> but I guess it's a lot of hard work, which with volleyball it prepares you for once you get out. What is it about balancing like you kind of alluded to, being not only a Division One volleyball player, but also a student athlete that kind of goes hand in hand or sometimes causes you to make some sacrifices about, okay, I have to study a little bit more than I want to, or all right, I can't necessarily do this with my other friends because I have to dedicate this time to volleyball or whatever the case may be. That has been easy and difficult about your first year. I mean, it's a lot of work, like a lot, but I mean, if my friends ask me to hang out and I have homework to do or something like that, I always do my homework first, try to get it done, and then I go hang out with them or try to get everything done during the week so I have some free time over the weekend to hang out with my friends and such. Definitely. Additionally, as we kind of close out here, what are some other things outside of school, outside of volleyball, that you like to do, keep busy, hobbies, interests, things of that nature? Uh, well, I love playing basketball. Basketball is probably right up there with volleyball is my favorite sport. And every chance I get, I'll play basketball. So then, let me dive in a little bit further. Then what caused you to pursue volleyball in college compared to basketball? Um, I guess my freshman year, I was playing basketball. And I, the volleyball coach was my gym teacher. And he's like, hey, you should come out and try out for volleyball. So I tried out for volleyball, and I loved it. And I just kind of started focusing on volleyball because I couldn't play club volleyball and do basketball at the same time with the hours and everything. 
Gotcha. Well, thank you very much for joining us for the Spotlight segment, Austin. We greatly appreciate it. Coming up next, our third segment, everyone's favorite at home, Dishing the Rock. But this week, with assistant men's volleyball coach, J.W. Keycaper. Stay tuned for more on Volley Dance Weekly. Students at IPFW have the advantage over a larger university in that we are very engaged with them. We know them. Um, we have uh, relatively small class sizes and we really know our students well. And um, we know their capabilities. We can challenge them. And I just love the environment and the atmosphere here. I just love interacting with students and I like the intellectual stimulation of um, teaching and research. Welcome back to Volley Dons Weekly, and it's time right now to Dish the Rock with assistant men's volleyball coach J.W. Kike for joining us again for the third segment. Why can't we come up with a pun with my first name? Why do we have to come up with a pun with Rock's first name? Your first name is J.W. Yeah, well, there's there's two words. There could be a word with a J and a W. Like, do you want to be creative right now? Just wondering. I don't know. Like, let's be just wondering with, right, J, so with assistant coach J.W. Kike. Right, Why so can't let, we do then that? Then let's try this again. Welcome back to the third segment on Volley Dons Weekly. Just wondering with assistant men's volleyball coach J.W. Kike. There we go. I like that much better. There Perfect. you go, Rock. There Perfect. you go. Satisfying like just better. for you. Very satisfying. So, J.W., I'm just wondering. See what I did there? Yeah, exactly. How see, do you, it works. How do you feel about the upcoming matches this weekend taking on... Two of the more perennial powers the past couple years in the MIVA, both Lewis University and two-time defending champion Loyola Chicago. Well, I mean, Loyola obviously has been a, a perennial powerhouse, I guess, for, for a little bit now with the two national championships coming back-to-back. -back. Um, and then you have Lewis University, uh, who got to the national championship match to play Loyola last year. Uh, so, you know, two of the, the better programs in the MIVA, especially, you know, recently, um, you know, historically, you know, I think we're definitely up there. But, you know, recently I think they've been the two best. Um, so, you know, you got to go in and you have to try to, you know, know what is going on in those two matches. I think both of those teams bring very, very good middles to the table, uh, both in Nick Olson and Jeff Jendrick from uh, Loyola and uh, Schmeagel and uh, Bobby Walsh from L Lewis. Uh, so you got to make sure you serve the ball really aggressively um, and kind of nullify their advantage in the middle of uh, both teams. Both teams have the advantage in the middle, I think, um, against any team in the MAVA. Uh, so you really have to go out and serve the ball aggressively to try to neutralize their advantage there. Um, but I think we have some advantages on the pins against these volleyball teams. I think Andy, you know, can definitely go put some balls away, you know, matched up against some Loyola pins. And I think, um, you know, Alex Hardhaller can, is definitely, you know, a player of that caliber who can go up and, and terminate, you know, against the Loyola block. And you put Tony Price in a good spot, he can definitely terminate against these teams too. Uh, so, you know, I think we have some good pins to go up against these teams. We just have to try to neutralize, you know, their advantage in the middle with some older guys and some All-Americans there in those spots. Now, with this being the last week of the regular season and IPFW's playoff position, Almost all but certain wrapped up getting in as the eighth seed, but not necessarily based off of Lindenwood having the possibility of winning both of their matches if we drop both of ours. Knowing that IPFW is still kind of in control because if we win one match, then we're definitely in. What do you think the message is going to be as we practice this week and as we try to gain focus, not only for these matches, but preparing for the start of playoffs for the team next week? Well, I think, I think part of it is, is that you got to go out and you got to play a good first 10 points of every set. Um, you know, I think we've done a very good job of playing the first 10 points well against um, teams in the first set. I think we come out really, really strong. Uh, we talked about this in the first segment. But I think, you know, the second set, I don't think we come out as strong. Um, we have to make sure we talk to our guys about, yeah, treat every set like it's a new game, a new match, because you, you got to win three. It doesn't just count that you win one or compete in one. you got to be able to compete and win, you know, different sets and different times. So, I think we have to go back and we have to put an emphasis on, you know, competing hard early again so we don't get behind. Um, you know, these are two teams we play this weekend and certainly if we match up against Ohio State in the playoffs, that can really, really punish you if they get a lead. So you got to make sure you play with these teams and play with them and be close with them when you get to the late spots. Um, and I think we have to make sure we, we push that late kind of clutch. You know, when I say clutch, I mean like, uh, you need a kill and you're going to get a kill in this point. You know, 23-23, who are you going to set? Who's going to put a ball away for you? Uh, who's going to make a good serve at 23-23 so you can make a dig or a block? Um, who's going to make that dig or that block to win you a point? Um, I think we have to really focus on those couple of points as well because those points um, have continued to let us down all season. You know, we, we can play with teams 
you know, we've played with every single team in the MIVA. We've played with Ohio State up until 23-23 and had some chances to win sets late. We just haven't been able to get over that hump and win those sets consistently against those volleyball teams. So those are the big issues that we have to address as we can practice. And I think there's certainly issues that you can address and you can hopefully uh, get some confidence into some guys late uh, and just take some, to take some swings and put some balls away. We've talked over the past couple of weeks, building towards the end of the season as we've kind of made our run to win a couple of crucial matches down the stretch to put us in a playoff spot, which currently we hold. So using these two matches now at the end of the season, last regular um, week match, that should really propel us to being hopefully successful come playoff time, playing two quality opponents this week. Well, I mean, certainly you want to win. So, I mean, certainly we're going to go out and we're going to try to win both matches. And... Um, I can't remember who Quincy plays. They play Ohio uh, they State, play McKendry and Ohio well. State as well. Uh, you know, are they one win up or are they two wins up? I can't know, but I, I think we can't really get to the seven seed. So you Unless know, they drop both and we win both. Yeah, so I mean, maybe we right can't now. get there, but you know, we're going to play hard and we're going to try to win. And I think these are two winnable matches for us. You know, they're going to be good matches and they're going to be difficult matches, but they're certainly winnable. We can go out and, and play with these two volleyball teams and win a match. So it's going to be going out. We're going to try our hardest to, to you know win these matches, be competitive, and get some you know, moxie, get some, get some blood flowing, get some momentum going for the playoffs. I think we had that with Lindenwood. I don't think necessarily we had it against Quincy, uh, but if we can continue to win at least one of these two matches and play some good, good volleyball, uh, I think we can be deadly in the playoffs. I don't think a lot of these teams want to see us in the playoffs. Um, you know, I think they'd rather see some of the other teams coming up to come into their place. So, you know, we're going to go out and we're going to play hard and we're going to be a tough out in the playoffs, that's for sure. And we'll see how all that wraps up as the regular season concludes this weekend for the IPFW men's volleyball team. A big thank you to Austin Neese for joining us during the Spotlight segment. Another big thank you to assistant coach J.W. Kikefer for joining us in place of head coach Ryan rock Parat. For all of you at home, especially those folks out in Dubuque, Iowa, thank you for joining us. Another shout out to our sponsors, IIB, Indiana Physical Therapy, Molten, Oni, and Pizza Hut. I'm your host, Jordan Armstrong. We'll see you guys next week, right here on Volley Duns Weekly. Get your serves in. <laughs> <laughs>